Hey everyone, NavyDoc5184 here, and welcome to another music reaction. Today we are reacting to Dire Straits um, doing Tunnel of Love live at Wembley. This is one that was highly suggested by a lot of people in my last one, so I figured I would go ahead and uh, just go ahead and do that one. And before I go any further, I just want to say if you are interested in seeing any ad-free reactions, or anything like that to give extra support to the channel feel free to check out my patreon you can hit that card right over there to head over there um, like I said you can get ad free reactions um, and well many other perks on there so if you'd like to go ahead and check that out but I just gotta say if I get nothing else from my journey with Dire Straits the one thing that I'm getting is a full understanding on why so many people um, put Mark Knopfler on like their all-time greatest guitarist. You know, just a few I've done so far have really kind of solidified that point. But as a bonus, I'm getting some really great music with it too. So, you know, really it's like, this is definitely more a double win for me. This has been such a joy to react to. You know, I, I love me classic rock anyways. You know, and as much classic rock as I listen to, it's amazing really how much there still is that I have to, I guess you could say, get myself more versed with. Uh, Dire Straits is definitely one of those groups that I am definitely needing to get myself more familiar with. And thanks to you guys, uh, that is happening. So now one thing I will say is for some reason, when I heard that this was, you know, like a lot of people saying, you know, one at Wembley, I already automatically expected to be great. I, I hear so many things. I don't know what it is about Wembley Stadium. They seem to put on really good shows. I mean, for me, you know, when I think of Wembley Stadium, the first thing that really come to me is, well, two of them are music and one is uh, wrestling. Because, like, SummerSlam 92, I think, I always think of when I hear Wembley, and that was a really fun wrestling show for me to watch. But then you got Queen performing at Wembley and Michael Jackson doing his bad tour at Wembley. I mean, I don't know what it is about Wembley Stadium. It's like... I heard someone say it's almost like Wembley is like a character in and of itself. Like whether it was the wrestling show or whether it's like with concerts, it's just the atmosphere at Wembley just seems to make things great. So automatically I'm already expecting this to be a real fire performance. And we're just gonna go ahead and get right into it. I will leave a link to the original video in the description below. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. You can never go wrong starting off with a very strong sax solo. Well, they're already starting off pretty strong. Mark's hitting us early, isn't he? No complaints. Everybody really gets their time to shine, don't they? That's what makes these guys so awesome.
I can already see why this was highly suggested. He's showing off the chops early. I love how he gets that look where it's like he looks so serious, but at the same time. Talk about being in love, talk about being in the band. There's a place in Newcastle where I come from called the Spanish City. I used to go there when I was a kid and listen to rock and roll music and most other things. As I was saying, he looks so serious, but at the same time, looks like he's having so much fun. Place called the Town Moor, is what he's doing. Ooh! Okay. This song is called A Tunnel of Love. Alrighty, what do we got? What y'all got for us? Okay, I don't think I was expecting that. <laughs> a little carnival going on here, right? Sounds like we're going on like a merry-go-round or something, don't it? Never mind. Love the backing vocals with this too. Have yourselves a good time. Feels like a song that needs to go on a feel good playlist, don't it? Okay. Interesting work with the lights there, I like it. Y'all, this is such a 
fun song. I can see why this was so highly suggested. We're only about halfway through and already I feel like we've gotten such a great, uh, what's the word, not sample size, but basically a great showing of Mark's guitar skills. And based on the length of the song, I'm sure that we haven't even gotten to the best part of his guitar playing yet, but he's already like had a few parts where obviously it took me back a little bit where, you know, just, you know, just elicit, you know, such an immediate reaction. And <clears throat> excuse me, I think that's the thing that I really enjoy about watching him play is the fact that I don't know if it's still because of the fact that I'm just still very unaware, maybe of just the full scope of his skill. You know, because again, you know, even though I have started, you know, doing some reactions to them, you know, compare, I'm imagining that they've got such a huge catalog that I've probably only barely scratched the surface. And that's probably putting it nicely. You know, like I said, just compared to the fact that, you know, two songs of there I've already known, but like I think of Sultan's a Swing and just like I knew that song but you know for some reason it was just it wasn't until I watched him play that I really got an appreciation for just how good he was and then on top of the fact you know some of the facts that you guys have given me before it's just so amazing watching him play but then on top of that seeing everybody else mixed in with it it's just such a beautiful combination it's just how can you not listen to this or watch this and just kind of just get like a nice feeling inside like i said it's like this song belongs on a like if you were to take songs to kind of raise your mood i feel like this song is one that would be on there i just i just don't see how i can't called it, it. I can already feel it. The best is yet to come. Okay, that's actually kind of... Considering how this song started, this is actually kind of cool. Girl, it looks so pretty to me. 
I like what he's doing with this. I'll explain it in the closing monologue what I like about what he's doing here. If I remember. He could blow my mind so bad I'll completely forget, but... But I really appreciate like what he's doing with the song right here. Look at just how into it is. He's absolutely focused on it. You know what? And I love and appreciate seeing that from artists. Just seeing how locked in they are. That's what I was waiting for. Starting to pick it up. I have a feeling the fun's really about to begin. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, that. I love seeing stuff like that so much. Just seeing groups interact with each other. Not gonna lie, I love the bass line in the song. I'm not gonna lie, this is darn near the perfect song if you ask me. Dude. Yo, why is this making me teary eye? such a cool visual, I love it.
Oh. <laughs> oh no, please don't be over. No. Don't be over. It's not fair. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. <laughs> mm. Wow. Wow! Oh! Yo! Yo! All right, y'all. That was Dire Straits' "Tunnel of Love" live at Wembley Stadium, and it was just as great as I expected it to be. As great as everybody said it was. As I said earlier in there, it darn near felt like the perfect song because I was just talking about like just how much I love like the bass part in the song. And then almost like immediately after that, in my head, I was listening to the rhythm, like, man, even the rhythm guitar is like on point, you know? And then you had the piano bit in the beginning, dude, homeboy on the drums. I mean, it's just like, this is one of those rare songs where no matter which part of the song you're listening to, you're just, it, it's just, you're enjoying it. It doesn't matter which part of the song you're listening to. Uh, Oh, man, like I said, you know, and it's like I still, you know, I had to take a minute to kind of um, get myself together before doing this because, you know, like I said, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, why is this song making me tear up? You know, it's not like it was like a hugely emotional song, but yet it elicits such strong feelings, you know, in you listening to it. And like those type of songs right there. Like I don't care what genre it is, you like you can look at really any genre of music, and there's like going to be at least one song where, you know, whatever the meaning of the song is, really doesn't matter. It'll elicit like a really strong feeling in you, and even if it's like a really happy-go-lucky song, you can kind of like feel those tears well up just because of how much feeling it's, you know, pulling inside of you. I, I, I can't really say there's any genre of music where there's not at least one song, you know, that I get that from. But man, oh man. And um, something that and I darn near almost did forget, but um, earlier when I was talking about uh, something that I really appreciated, um, what they're doing with the song. Because it's like the song started off, you know, I wouldn't say it was going to be like it felt like slow. You know, but um, maybe more mellow, you know, it's like not quite really fully upbeat, but definitely not slow, like a good happy medium with it. But then you kind of got picked up to a real upbeat number, you know, and you're just feeling it, feeling it, feeling it. And then um, not too long after, you know, I took my pause break, um, he really kind of slowed it down. And the reason that I was saying that I really appreciated what he did is because based on what I have seen from him, I knew that at the end, you know, the last few minutes of the song was going to be really, really probably upbeat and full of energy. So it felt like that what that s slower part of the song did was it was kind of like a go ahead, take your time, catch your breath, because the real fun's about to begin and you need to be up and ready for it. You know, and that was that was the thing, you know, and that was kind of like what I got, because sure enough, when I, you know, when I said, you know, like, here it comes, when he started picking it up, that's what I was expecting to have, have happened, you know, and I just wasn't expecting the strong feeling, you know, inside the, you know, come with that bit. You know, that much I wasn't ready, so that really made me a little extra more appreciative of it, because if he had done all that and just kind of just went straight to it without any, like, slowdown or anything, 
I don't know if I could have emotionally handled that, to be honest, but, uh, man. You know, once again, it's just one of those things, you know, just, I've just, I have just simply learned to just trust the suggestions that y'all have given because obviously you are the folks that obviously know their work so you know what's really good uh i will say this the only thing the only ever piece of advice i will never listen to for anybody is that they try to tell me to not listen to anything because there have been too many times where i've had people not so much on youtube just in general has suggested that i not watch something or not listen to anything and then I go so long without, and then it's like, I go ahead and do it anyways. And I'm like, oh my goodness, why did I listen? Because the thing that I've had to learn is that just because somebody else may not like something doesn't mean I won't, you know, I won't like it. You know, I may not love it, but if it's something I enjoyed, it's just like, yeah. So I would much rather like take a suggestion, watch it and not like it then take someone's suggestion to not watch or listen to something and end up regretting listening to that. You know, I feel like there's way more to lose by not giving something a chance than there is by giving something a chance. You know, like, I mean, this was, you know, almost 16 and a half minutes, you know, and it's like, if I would have, you know, say, you know, done this and not liked it, you know, it's just like, well, at least now I know, but you know, when so far everything you guys have suggested I've liked, it's like, I'll take that chance. But like I said, just don't ever tell me not to listen to something because that I'm not going to listen to because I would much rather, you know, try to, you know, expand my horizons and listen to something and, you know, not like it because, you know, just, I just feel like there's just too much to miss with that. But that's neither here or there. I totally went on a tangent that's not even really related to that and I'm sorry about that but you know sometimes I just get lost in my own thoughts and just speak them out loud but oh jeez man what a song like I said this is darn near perfect darn near perfect song and there's probably only a handful of songs that I can you know pull out of anybody you know and say this is the darn near perfect song there aren't many but this is definitely one that is probably close, but whew. man, I'm gonna have to need to take some time uh, off from that one before I do another reaction. Good Lord, it's gonna take me some time to recover, but uh, either which way, I really enjoyed it. Thank y'all so much uh, for suggesting this one. And um, in the meantime, feel free to check out some of my other Dire Straits reactions. Those have been just as fun. Uh, once again, thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did, and I'll catch you all down the road.